So you've heard of 3D printing, it's kind of piqued your curiosity, but you're not quite sure how it fits in your shop. Today we're gonna to go over exactly how it fits and where to start. So Shop Nation is all about the pursuit of shop greatness, and in my opinion, 3D printing makes that a heck of a lot easier. Now the printer that I would recommend to anybody looking to get into 3D printing, especially for functionality within a shop, I would steer them towards the Prusa line of printers. It's reliable, it's got good capabilities, and it's fairly low cost. Now when I say 3D printing for your shop, I don't necessarily mean in your shop. You see, the nature of 3D printing, and more specifically the materials used in 3D printing, means you need a controlled atmosphere. So if your shop is not air conditioned or humidity controlled, you definitely need to be doing the 3D printing inside. I recommend this Prusa i3 Mark III or i3 Mark III S. The newest version out is the i3 Mark III S. And maybe if you're watching this video in a year, it's gonna be i3 Mark IV. Whatever the model number, that's the one I recommend. Now Prusa Research is a company out of actually the Czech Republic. For years, these printers have actually won best desktop 3D printing awards by various publications. Now I am not in any way affiliated or endorsed by Prusa, I just believe in the product, so I wanna recommend it to you. Now what's really cool about these printers is that they're open source, so why would you care? Basically what that means is that every single design feature about this printer, including the software, is available for the public. Now the cost of the printer itself is low in terms of 3D printers, but fairly high in terms of tool cost. The kit version is $749 US, which is what I did and I highly recommend. It was a lot of, it was really fun. Now if you wanna buy the printer fully assembled, that is about $1,000 US. We're almost in the territory of a nicer table saw. So it is an expensive tool, but I'm telling you, the functionality of this thing is crazy. So real quick, let's go through the things that I like and that I don't like about the printer itself. The first of which is the metal frame. Now when you're in the world of desktop or hobby 3D printers, a lot of times the frames and the components of the printer itself are kinda janky. This Prusa printer uses a combination of aluminum extrusions and aluminum plate to make up the frame of the printer. And this makes it extremely rigid. So in the world of 3D printing, it's very similar to the world of CNC machining. The more rigid you are, the more accurate and repeatable your machines are. Now the second thing is the Trinamic drivers. Now if you don't know what those are, that's okay. 3D printers work on the basis of making very precise calculated movements. And they do that through stepper motors. Now in a lot of the lower grade hobby 3D printers, those stepper motors are just receiving a signal from a motherboard to step X amount. Well in reality, they may not actually step X amount and your part can get screwed up. These Trinamic 2130 drivers that this printer has allows it to run extremely quiet. I mean, it's running right next to me right now. and eliminates the need for limit switches. If you take anything away from this, it's that it is more precise, it's quieter, and it's more repeatable. Now third, I really like this thing because of the amount of sensors and automation built into this desktop 3D printer. It's actually kind of astounding. Most 3D printers have two thermistor or temperature sensors. This has four. This printer has auto bed leveling. So before every print, it uses a little proximity probe to measure nine points across the print bed and establish that it's level. This means ultimately less work for you on the setup and more reliable prints. Both of the cooling fans have speed feedback to the motherboard. I'm telling you, I work in the world of 3D printing and the amount of features that are packed into this cheap, low cost desktop printer is crazy. More sensors and automation does sound like it'd be more complicated, but all of them are really in place to make your life as the user easier. The fourth is the print bed. I love this print bed. It's actually a flexible, metallic, removable print bed. So when you're done with your print, you simply take the print bed off of the magnetic base, give it a little bit of a bend, and your part pops right off. Now most hobby printers have some form of a glass print bed, and that is good for certain materials, but for the vast majority of materials, this system is hard to beat. And lastly, probably one of my favorite features is called the power panic mode. Now this is actually pretty impressive. If this thing loses power, it actually has onboard memory where it stores where it was in the print, and then upon resuming power, will actually resume your print. With most 3D printers, if you have a power loss or a power blip even, your print is gone. But this thing, and I've tested it unintentionally, works. It's crazy. So now let's go over a couple things that I think could be improved on this printer that I don't like as much. First of which is connectivity. Right now, the only way to get prints in and out of this thing is either through a physical USB cable or an SD card. 
Now you can argue that simplicity equals reliability and I would probably agree with you. It's just when you're used to working with other printers which you can wirelessly connect to, this seems a little 2004. Second of which is the power supply. I think it is slightly undersized. Now they could have fixed this since I bought the printer, but that has been literally the only problem I've ever had with this machine. I actually had a power supply fail early on because I was trying to heat the printer up to a temperature for a higher grade material. Certainly within the specs of the printer itself, but for whatever reason the power supply just kicked the can. So Prusa was very good about it, they replaced it, sent me a new one, and since then I've had no issues. So I want to say that it's fixed, but that kind of left me a little bit gun shy. Number three, and really a pet peeve for myself about this machine, is that some of the components are actually printed. Now I will say for the desktop or hobby grade category of printers, which this printer clearly lives within, printed parts are extremely common. I just kind of have higher expectations for this machine just because of how it's built and how it works but I also understand the economics of printing the parts for this price point. Now all of the parts that are printed on this machine are printed out of PETG, which is a very strong and durable material, and I've had zero issues with any printed parts. I'm just a perfectionist and I want it all to be metal, okay? There are also zip ties holding down the rails for the Y-axis, which I think is kind of weird. Again, I've had no issues with it, but as an engineer I just look at it and go, really? And the fourth and final thing, I couldn't even think of five, that's how good this thing is. The final thing is that this is an open frame printer, meaning there's no enclosure around it. I can stick my hand in and around the printing components itself. Now I'm an adult, if I touch something hot, it's my own damn fault. But if you have kids, this could be a hazard. But also more importantly, the environment in which the part is printing is not controlled. You see the filament that's being extruded is being melted and then cooled very rapidly. So if you can't control how rapidly it's cooling or how rapidly it's heating, it can introduce problems with the parts. Now this is more exaggerated with materials like ABS, which have a very high tendency to warp as they cool. When you're printing materials like PLA or even PETG, this concern really doesn't exist. But it still would be nice to have an enclosure for this. But the good news is, is that the great people of the world have already figured this out. There's actually this IKEA furniture table you can convert into an enclosure for this printer. I'll link the location showing you what I'm talking about. I personally think that there is a place for 3D printing in any shop. There's just too many things you can do with it. Now one of the biggest roadblocks for people wanting to get into 3D printing is actually not printing itself, it's modeling. The great news is, is that now more than ever it's easier and more accessible to get into 3D modeling. The two I would recommend if you want to get into it is SketchUp and Fusion 360. Those are both excellent resources and you can actually have for free. And with great resources like Thingiverse, link below, you can go download models of parts and be printing today. So I hope this video was useful. If anything, it introduced you to the concept of bringing a 3D printer into your shop. I will be doing more videos in the future on 3D printed tools, jigs, and fixtures that I use around the shop. But I'd love to hear what you think about that. Is that something that's interesting? Should I be focusing somewhere else? Let me know in the comments. Now one thing that I forgot to do in my last video, but that I typically do at the end of my videos is a subscriber update. So as of shooting this video right now, we're at 41,186. I can't even like, how do I, that's, that's a lot of people. Uh, that's, anyway, thank you. Thank you as always for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hammer the like button, hit subscribe, make sure you get content going forward. Look into 3D printing and as always, keep pursuing shop greatness. See ya.